by now most of you have seen the new Rogue One trailer. Uh, I have, and I've got I've got some thoughts on it. As a matter of fact, I have one overriding thought above all others, and that is that it was freaking awesome, just awesome. I enjoyed this trailer definitely more than I did the Force Awakens trailer, and I'll tell you why. First and foremost, it's it's done an amazing job of calling back to the original trilogy. There's a lot of a lot of reminders, a lot of you know uh, residual feelings that come back as you watch this trailer. We'll start with the open and the classic Star Wars theme. That theme played in a new movie makes me feel ways that I I haven't felt in a long time. Uh, so you know I, I love the music for Force Awakens. It's John Williams. How can you not? But but this this is this is how it's done. This is Star Wars for me. That music, and then we get pulled further into our Star Wars nostalgia with some OG characters. First, we get Mon Mothma. Now, let me just say that this is some of the finest casting that I've ever seen. She is so good at reminding me of the original Mon Mothma from Return of the Jedi that I thought they might have pulled one of those you know Jeff Bridges and Tron things. You know that they make the old Jeff look like the new Jeff. Or actually, they did the same thing. Uh, in Ant-Man with Michael Douglas, and pretty effective that was. I, I actually thought for a second that that's what they did here with Mon Mothma. Uh, I mean, but that's that's her. That's, that is Mon Mothma. Let's get this out of the way. This film is not about the stealing of the plans for the second Death Star, for which many Bothans died. That's, that's Jedi. This is about the stealing of the plans for the first Death Star, which apparently Mon Mothma was involved in as well. So we've got some OG Stormtroopers as well. And I, I love Stormtroopers of all kinds in general. But I'm also very glad that they, they didn't try to change them any for this film. They stuck with the traditional, for the most part, for the, with the traditional Stormtrooper outfit. Uh, and to do otherwise would, would distract me, you know, knowing that this place takes, or this story takes place circa, you know, episode four. Now, when I saw this shot, I nearly lost my mind. ATATs are so symbolic to me of the original trilogy. Seeing them took me back, much like the, the, the music did. And I, I love this guy, not because of his character as being an OG character, but because he's not an original character. Uh, at one point, though, I thought he might be Grand Moff Tarkin, but he's not a Moff, so he can't be. But it's his, it's his, it's his outfit, his costume. Uh, it evokes nostalgic feelings for me about the costume design from the original trilogy. And we see him again here looking utterly badass, uh, especially for a character who is meant to have that you know, typical stuffy imperial quality to him. Costume design in general is great. From the Rebel pilots to the TIE fighter pilot costume, I, I think she's dressed as a TIE fighter anyway, it looks like a TIE fighter pilot's costume, uh, to the aforementioned OG stormtroopers, you really do feel at home here in this trailer. By the way, we've got some nostalgic sound design too. Listen to this. I mean, right? <laughs> oh boy, I cannot wait to hear those sounds again in, uh, you know, on the big screen. So you know what else I love? I, I love me some Death Star, and this shot is just, it's beautiful, man. Look at, look at the scale. There are at least five Star Destroyers floating around it, and, and those things are, are big. Star Destroyers are enormous, but there's five of them, just kind of tiny little, they just look like small little ships compared. Uh, and that, that scale, that sense of scale that the, that the filmmakers are giving you really gives the Death Star an intimidating feel. And like the ATATs, the Death Star is so symbolic of the original trilogy that, that seeing it in a new film, again, it just fills me up. It's like, it's like being in love again. And, and that's one of the main reasons I love this trailer more than I did the Force Awakens trailer because I, I feel like this one is mine. It belongs, to, it belongs to me. It belongs to those of us who truly love the original trilogy above all others at the expense of the prequels and anything else that it, it, it's, it's home for us. But it's not the only reason why I love this trailer and why I'm already in love with the film. Going back to Force Awakens, one of the things that I loved about it uh, was the on-the-ground, you-are-there approach to the cinematography. And Rogue One appears to be taking its cues from J.J. Abrams. It's a more natural, gritty approach to filmmaking, which is in direct contrast to the polish and shine of the prequels. The, the overly CG quality to those films. Let's go back to the ATAT -AT scene. Shooting this from the ground, looking up at the ATATs creates more fear, more peril. It, it reminds me actually a lot of World War II footage that we've seen over the years, and even some modern World War II films like Spielberg's um, Saving Private Ryan. You you feel like you're in you're in the action. Finally, it's great that we have all these nostalgic callbacks, but if that's all there were, we wouldn't really have a quality new film on our hands. If if all we want is nostalgia, then we just go back and watch the original trilogy. But we are definitely getting 
some new flavor here. We're getting a new story, a story that we haven't been told before, and we're getting new characters. Jin Erso is a new character, as far as I know. And no, I do not believe she is Ray's mother, by the way. She'd have to have been something like, I don't know, 45 years old when she gave birth to her for that to make any sense. Not that that's improbable. It's, it's just not... Well, why does everyone have to be related anyway? That's <laughs> What's the fascination with this? She's just Jin Erso, man. That, that works for me. There are a lot of interesting, brave, charming people in this galaxy, and they don't all have to be related. Now, there's also these guys, the, the rogue gallery of bounty hunters, etc., that go on this mission with, with Jin, and they appear to hold their own among all that Star Wars awesomeness that surrounds them. We've also got this guy who's kind of a mystery. I, I don't think it's Darth Vader because he's wearing a robe with a hood and not a helmet. Plus, just, just no, man. I, I don't want him in this trailer anyway. I wouldn't mind Darth Vader in the film. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of looking forward to that, but only as a, like a, you know, a tease. But I don't want him in the trailer. But I do think this is some kind of chamber for the Emperor, uh, Palpatine. Those are Imperial Guards, after all. And it looks, like, it looks like a cryo chamber of some kind with all that you know, smoky stuff coming out of there. So you know, maybe, that's what, maybe that's what gives Palpatine his, <laughs> his youthful appearance, right? No, so this is probably a new villain, which I think is good. I, I, I like that quite a bit. So to sum up, I, I really do feel like this one is one badass way to kick off the non-sequential type movies they have planned for the future. Looks great, feels great, sounds great, and I simply cannot wait to see this movie. The Han Solo and Boba Fett origin stories that we're hearing about are going to have some serious footsteps to follow uh, to, to, meet this, to meet this standard. But what do you guys think? I, I want to hear from the oldies and the newbies, Star Wars vets. Are you feeling what I'm feeling, newbies? Is this the Star Wars you love, or do you prefer a little more polish and shine like in the prequels? Let me know in the comments below, guys. And until next time, may the Force be fresh baked!